just feel free to ask but that's effectively how the basic mechanics of a trust it's three parties you can have any number of amounts of beneficiaries depending on the circumstances you can have any number of, of trustees depending on the circumstances but to keep it really really simple you have three separate roles the set law has full title the set law wants to put whatever he has full title to so whatever he's in possession of he now deposes it um, or reposes that into trust the trust now has full title of it the trust then separates title into beneficial and legal so it splits full title into legal title and beneficial title that means there's two separate titles that are created with two separate roles two separate relationships and the set law comes out of the picture at that stage the trust is in place the property is uh, in place and the beneficiary enjoys its use the legal the trustee administrates its use all right so the beneficiary again talk about the car so if you're driving the car and you get a speeding ticket if you don't know who you are that's why we have problems now a new concept for you substance over form we live in a world which loves forms loves the paperwork loves the administration and loves to get you to comply with that administrative process that's the language and the work of a trustee all right the substance is the substance is your actions your intentions okay what were you intending to do what did your actions actually depict rather than what you have said all right so um reason why i'm saying this now because if you didn't even write one single declaration you just instructed x y and z and you your behavior was such that you expected g to do something and g's did actually make payments um in the past to pay for fuel and to pay for the mot and the car to be serviced then g's is acting like a trustee no matter what was said he is acting like one based on the instructions that he received and the 21 year old son maybe he's a sport but all he knows is it's not my job to pay the bills that's Jeeves job my job is to enjoy it drive it do what I want to do with it but I don't pay for it whenever it needs something needs to be paying for I call up Jeeves he sorts it that's fine so the substance of a beneficiary is one who acts like one one who knows who he or she is so I come back to the point now when you get presented with bills and you pay who are you what capacity are you acting in please answer the question I haven't gone silent I'm just waiting for people to act so they can tell them, talk to me good people are getting it I want some more answers that's it you're acting as a trustee now do you think you really want to be a trustee in this life right now in this world uh, where they're giving you grief because if the trustees don't perform it is jail time now obviously they got rid of debtors jail and replaced that with bankruptcy so they, they they are acting equitably towards you but he who has who he who sleeps on his rights has none he who waves his rights has no rights and this is the point so my job is to make you aware of them and then now is our job is to, you make the decision do you want to find out, find out what they are and implement or do you just want to continue to be ignorant that's now up to you but this is where we're coming to now we're coming to the place where if presentments are going to keep being made or presented upon and I say you now your straw man then this is why you need to understand who you really are all right so that's why all the DC stuff you know about authorized representative and UCC and um, straw man agreement this it's all trust at the end of the day when you break it down to its bare bones all you're doing is expressing who you really are and no one really knew how to do it beforehand I give God thanks for Christian Waters because of fact, quite frankly he's broken it all down he's broken it all down and you know um, and he, what I'm teaching now is his stuff I'm not taking any credit for it at all I've just made it more anglicized in that respect but effectively what you're learning now is, is besides what I'm teaching about the basics of the law of trust you're going to come to see now what we're, what we're seeing and what's happening to us every single day we're not defining our relationships and so we're getting done, we're getting damaged, we're getting uh, uh, beaten up in the public because we're just not defining who we are. It's just as simple as that. So every relationship that you're going to enter into from this point onwards needs to be clearly defined. 
And so you do that by your endorsement, your signature. You restrict your appearance in the public. So before, we would say, oh, authorised representative of or agent of. Well, we just realised that an agency is not the same as a trust. An authorised representative is not the same as a trust. It's all DC. I would now be limiting my relationships in the form of a trust. So normally, if I sign, it's normally, depending on the situation and the relationship I want to be by, but normally I, if it's like a, a rental agreement, it'd be by set law then signature. So I know if there's any problems later on, the, the lawmaker can change the rules. So if they're telling me I've got to pay £1,500 for the car to be damaged, I'm saying, well, no, you know what, I don't agree with your terms. And since I paid, uh, I signed by set law, I can do what I want. They don't know what you're talking about, but their lawyers will. That's just one example. You know, any relationship you go into, you know, if or by beneficiary, if you know you want to be the beneficiary of uh, the beneficial end of that arrangement of that agreement. Is everyone seeing my point here? You restrict and limit your appearance in this public world because it's your straw man that's getting damaged, and you've got to protect him or her. All right, so you restrict your appearances, you limit them, or well, your relationships. It's all about the relationships. So now you can start to define who do you want to be. You're always a set law, always a set law. You are always a set law. You have been given dominion of this earth. All right, so the best way I can define it tomorrow, we're going to go in more detail. But in, even in the basic courses, I teach this because it's, it makes pure sense. You have a creator, okay? You have, and I'm not. This is not a religious lesson. This is, you know, the whole system is predicated on the Bible anyway. I'm just trying to break it down for you so you can see. So you've got here the creator. The creator created man, okay? And he says quite clearly that he's given man dominion. Then then man now decides, well, we need to have government. This is from Genesis to the five books of the Torah that talks about all this stuff. All right, so the man creates government. For some reason, government get greedy and want to have power. And now man is at the bottom being told what to do. But before he was there, second in command. What are you talking about? How does man get from there having dominion to being in, in voluntary servitude? He gave it away. Voluntarily. He gave it all away, but once you know who you are, you can get back on there. Now, something happened as well that made that even makes you even more uh, dominant and free, um, and put you back in this position. And he re he rewrote the rules completely, completely rewrote the rules. Again, I'll prove this all to you tomorrow. That's not a problem here. I'm just trying to tell you, you've got to understand and just take my word for, for today that you have full dominion. If, this, if it wasn't the case, your signature would have no meaning today. They could not monetize anything. You wouldn't be the surety to all debt in the system. You couldn't claim back any funds. It's just as simple as that. If you had no power, you would, you'd be useless to the system. If you had no control, you'd be used to the system. But the reason why others have dominion over what's rightfully yours is because they've given it away and now they use you know tactics like uh, you know just deception and, and, and fear based tactics to keep people ignorant of who they really are and what their rights truly are so therefore you can't operate how you're supposed to because you you don't know who you're supposed to be but you you have full rights of course you have only if you say so though you you have to say so. Yeah, you you have to understand who you are. That's right. If, if, if so you're going to come to a point, because today I'm just teaching, but you're going to come to a point that if you have to ask me, then you don't know. I'm not not beating up anyone today, but it will come to a point now that this is what I'm saying. You must know who you are and stand on it. Yeah, you spelled it correctly. No, no, that's correct. That's the correct spelling. S e t t l o r. All right. So you you are the one. Now, let me, I'm going to just show you some nuggets of proof here. Because this, who's got a mortgage? Just type in a Y if you've ever had a mortgage or you've got a mortgage currently. And then I'll see how they're using it against you. Trusts, they're using it against you all the time. All right? 
because this is so powerful now once you understand it and i say it's simple just not easy but once you understand it then the whole game is now exposed so you now go you say you want to buy a house fine you've seen the house that you like all right and then you go to your bank and you say to the mr banker hey i need some money not knowing how the banks normally operate so the banks say fine no problem we'll give you a mortgage how many people believe that the mortgage is actually the money just let me ask the question is, is the mortgage the money right that's right the mortgage is not the money the mortgage is a charge all right secured on the house the bank also give you a loan so to speak which is mortgaged okay and they use the house as the collateral to get their money back so just bear that in mind a mortgage is not the money a mortgage is a legal form of charge on your house all right so so therefore now so you want to buy a house the bank's right there saying right we'll give you the money no problem at all for some reason and now hopefully you will understand how the money system works but effectively all it is you sign forms all right which obviously we all know hopefully is a promissory note so you've given the bank money really but they've given you the facility to, to buy this house now at some point you got to exchange what is it you're exchanging titles all right and in that exchange process you have money uh, and the vendor has a house All right. It depends on, on the chain and all that stuff, but effectively, a strange, an exchange is going in place. There's someone in the middle who reckons that they act for both you and the bank, called a solicitor. And unfortunately, unbeknown to them, they're the vehicle uh, that allows the fraud to take place. Now, a few questions. Mortgage. Or oh, anyone knows what? A mortgage or is and mortgagee. Has anyone heard the term mortgage or before? So uh, normally you're told when in my broker days the mortgage or is one who pays, yeah? And the mortgagee is the one who provides the mortgage. But if you look up in the uh, a Black's Law Dictionary or a, a banking dictionary. All right, the mortgage or normally when it ends in OI is the one who gives pledges. So you've got a settler, law, grant or trust or um, exchange or you know transfer or pay or um, they're the ones who are giving. They're donating. They 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 they're giving of themselves. All right, into something. And then someone ending in E like the payee, mortgagee, trustee are the ones who have to do something. Um, and are responsible for something yeah they're recipients typically all right so the mortgage jaw is not necessarily the one who pays that's a deception it's the one who pledges property which tells me just would look it up in your dictionary or go online you'll, you'll find it okay the mortgage or pledges property which means you own the house in the first place before the mortgage company could put a charge on it the other question you've got to ask yourself is this. Normally they tell you in the exchange process to sign here but don't date. And that document's called a deed. And a deed is evidence of something actually happen, happening. All right? It's actually a trust. It's a, it's a, it's a, it is a trust document. It's a declaration. If you, read, if you look up and dig up your old uh, mortgage deed, it, it normally it's only got four points that lock you tight. Lock you in tight for life. That's 25 years. All right? And pretty much all it says is that you're bound to the conditions of the mortgage company, all right, to the mortgage condition. So you, you read that big, thick book, it just, that's the declaration, all right? It says um, something like, uh, what's it now? Oh, you pledge the property um, documented in, in section A above or something like that. It says that most of them say you pledge property, but we don't bother to read. Yeah, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. 
and then you sign and you have a witness. Notice the bank has never signed a deed. So the bank has never given anything away. So the bank are not the set law. Understand that. So the house was yours, free and clear, which they used your money because you didn't restrict your endorsement on their application form or their promissory, your promissory note, shall we say. Okay, So they got their solicitors to say, right, well, in the background, we can't let them know what's going on because obviously then the fraud will be exposed. We need you to let them to sign the deed but don't date it. You've got to do that in the background. That's the fraud. And notice you had possession of the house. So that's why when you talk about completion, you own that house anywhere between five minutes and the whole day between when uh, money is transferring from one bank account to another, you own that title free and clear of any um, disposition, of any charge, until the, the, they can get that deed signed and get the mortgage title to the land registry um, and, and say that a mortgage actually exists. And then they've got you. So that's all trust in reverse. All right, so it, they're telling you, you're the one who pledges property, you gave them property, you pledge it to them, you're the set law. Notice it was their rules on the deed that you signed. But notice if you read any of the documents, and I'm not putting ideas in your head or anything like that, but just read the documents, the, the deed doesn't say that it's irrevocable, and the mortgage term certainly doesn't say that it's irrevocable, so there's nothing to stop you from revoking a deed. You just need to know how to do it. All right, so that's, I'll leave that right there. I won't say anything more, but I'm just trying to tell you that you can correct relationships as well as create relationships because you're the set law. It's you, you can do what you want. This is what I'm trying to get in your mind. And that's why I love the power of trust because once you know who you are, there's nothing to stop you. Now, obviously, you're going to be dealing with, uh, you're going to be in a fight. They're not going to just roll over and say, oh, okay, fine, uh, you got me now. They're going to try and test you. Do you really know what you're talking about? Hence, you must know your stuff. And hence, yes, you've got to do a bit of reading. And hence, you've got to do a bit of studying. But then once you understand who you are, they can't stop you because you're using their rules and their laws against them. And they don't like it. And then when you're going to learn how to express trust, which we're going to talk about in one minute um, before we close for this evening, then you're in a whole different category. You're in a whole different ball game, operating in your full rights, operating in your full power. And quite frankly, as far as I'm concerned, they, they can't stop you. They may try, but they can't. And then this is where equity now comes to the rescue when the at-law world is trying to use fraud uh, or pecuniary, pecuniary matters and scenarios uh, to, 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 to dispossess you of, of, your, of your wealth. Is there any questions at this stage? Have I lost anyone? Are you still with me? Or is anyone in, in shock at the moment? I'm not quite sure. I might have said too much. I'm not quite sure if, uh, if people are still with me at this stage. I'm just trying to break it down step by step because it's a lot to this okay brilliant so um, that's just one example of how they're using trust against you, 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 you the, everything is a trust every relationship is a trust so it says lost a little but just need to do a bit more research okay no problem but ask away if there's any questions um, someone says they're godsmacked all good um, that's yeah, I mean, it is an aha moment for a lot of people. But the, the great thing is that once you know who you are, here it is again, okay? Once you know who you are, you can reverse and change and fix up, which is the beauty of this all, all right? And uh, um, Gary, just let me know wherever you're lost. I can, I can go over it again. I don't mind. Right, so... Um, so the, the main key for this evening is define your relationships. Know who you are and know you can do whatever you want to do. Obviously, as long as it's not breaking any laws. So you can't just go and kill someone or do something <laughs> that's contravening the law of the land. But effectively, you're the lawmaker. You can do what you want. All right. So which of the books do you recommend would you say was the best to begin with to gain a good basic understanding? That one would be um, the Gilbert's Law series by uh, Edward C. Halbert Jr. Um, or... Another one who I teach with, um, his name's Gary Watts. Uh, but to, see, the thing is, these books right now, unless you know what you're looking for, it, it may not even make any sense to you. you. You just read it, but it'd be really dry. It's only once I teach from it and show you what it's saying that 
the aha moments will come. That's in my experience anyway. But um, but yeah, I still list the books. Gary Watts. These are all textbooks that they, they teach you at university. So says, Gary Watt. There's no S, sorry. Excellent author. Probably one of the best ones I've found. And in, in, in he's UK-based, I think, University of um, Warwick. And it's just called Trust and Equity. All right? So either that one as a basics... Um, or, or what's it called? Uh, Gilbert's law summaries on trusts, yeah, by Edward uh, C. Halbeck Jr. Okay. Um, Why didn't you put the settler on your parking templates? Because I think I did actually on some of them. Oh, I've asked the question: Are you trying to tr are you trying to construe construe a trust relationship against me? Um, and those park those templates are much older than, than my knowledge of uh, trusts as well. But um, again, I wouldn't put stuff like that in in templates because it's dangerous. If you don't know what you're saying. Uh, you can get yourself in trouble. So this is why it's it's a, it's a whole new level. It's not just um, saying, "Well, I'm I'm this and I'm that." You can say it, but if you don't know, if you're not acting it, if you're not if you're not demonstrating it, then this world will look at how you're performing rather than what you're saying, and that's the fight. It's knowing to stand on your rights, is, and and that's what they're looking at. Well, do you know who you are or not? Let's test him. That's 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 the crux of it. That's what it comes down to. That's what it comes down to. So. Um, all I wanted to finish off with for, the, for this evening now is the power of expression so that will lead quite nicely tomorrow to enforce trust so um, how do you express your relationships now because effectively what you're saying is I'm trying to create the, the, the relationships I want to put the relationships correct, correctly I want to correct them and operate the right way so when I had the issue with the council tax and they're harassing me and then all of a sudden everything just went silent and it stopped and got rid of court cases and um, they, they couldn't disprove what I was saying, and it's quite evident. Even though they, they might deny me in in writing, uh, their performance is telling me that they actually understand every word I'm saying. Then I understand that, that there is a lot of power in trust. So how how do I express a trust? So what I said was to express a trust means that you you're basically given a declaration, and that can happen either in writing or by parole which means verbal okay you, you have the choice you don't have to use the words trusts to create a trust you don't need to you know use trust language per se to to express a trust it's all in in what you're saying and how you are saying it all right so basically the set law gives a declaration and that is the term where we say express right and it's private in other words it's not statutory it's not public all right, it's a private express trust, which the law of the land recognises. You have the recognition of trust at 1987. Download it, read it. It tells you, quite frankly, that you, the, the set law can define what law he wants his trust to be recognised in. Whatever, it is, whatever law that is, the set law's decides recognition of trust at 1987 i think it is very powerful document all right the court laws i mean i'm not going to too much now but you know the courts books rules case law i mean is riddled with beautiful knowledge about trusts and how you can use it for your your benefit yeah it's all there it's all there you know uh, we're going to go over tomorrow about the rules of certainty, uh, which is a test for trusts, all right, to prove your trust. Because if you can't prove a trust, you don't have one. Because once you express it, you've got to prove. Just to come, you're bringing it out of general relationship into private. Now we're going to use words like uh, private, use words like peculiar. So when you're reading or listening to you know politicians and they're using words like special relationship, you understand that they've got another language going on there that most people just won't understand. All right, special, yeah. They're telling you there's something else going on that we don't want you to know. 
um, and then others will crop up as, as we go along. But effectively, you, you, you're operating in a whole different realm. So if I'm saying I've got a special relationship with someone and I don't want anyone to know what I'm talking about, only mean that someone needs to know. But I'm talking about trust. Yeah? Or I've got a peculiar document that I'm looking for. Yeah? Or specific. All right? These are all... Um, so I'm trying to... Well, over the next couple of days, open your equitable eyes. So when you start to reread books and reread, watch movies, <laughs> that's a big giveaway, um, or just read, um, you know, law, uh, law books or case law or statutes and acts, and they define now what is when they say at law, um, or legal. Yeah, this has no legal basis. They're telling you, well, yeah, everything resides in in law, in equity. When the judge looks, you said you, you know, and specifically says. What you're telling me has no legal basis. What you're saying is, I can't hear you in this world. Um, right, well, just to answer your question, OID is an expression of trust. That's effectively the, break, the breakdown of it all, all right? But I'm not going to go into OID on this call. It's a separate issue here. But effectively, when you do your OID paperwork, you are expressing the trust. You're operating in your true form. And you're using the, the middleman as, as the vehicle to do that. Um, right, so yeah, so using terms like at law. The question, sorry if this flows on the call, was so is trust and OID all you need to function? Um, just so that no one's lost when they're listening to the recording. Um, right, so yeah, so when someone says legal basis compared to lawful basis, two different distinct worlds, two different distinct arguments. Yeah, so. Um, you need to understand is that there's just so much power to this. There's so much room for the manoeuvre, um, and there's so much strength. So when you express a basic trust for anything, any relationship, they will normally run a mile. Um, and plus, you're going to be paying, well, not you, but the trust will pay all the debts. And once you can stand on that, there's not much they can do about it. Now, so let me just quickly talk about expression. And can you still bear with me for a few more minutes? I know we've gone over the two-hour barrier, but... I did try my best to stay within two hours. This topic, you can talk. I could talk for a lifetime. You know, I did one course that was a four-day course, and I'm still teaching it. <laughs> so, um, you know, just it's just one of those things. Um, right. So, just quickly about expression of trust now, and then we'll wrap it up for this evening. Now, as I said before, here's a wonderful uh, pyramid triangle, whatever it is. So you've got the set law. Um, you've got a trustee and you have a beneficiary now obviously um, the straw man is by default construed to be a trustee and you are seen to be the straw man yeah so you're going to have to correct these relationships so when you get a demand made against you. Now, when I say you, it's really your straw man. So someone's writing into you saying, "We want you to pay a hundred grand in 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 the week's time." You know, we'll pay twenty thousand pounds. It's not personal. It's just business because the reason why that term comes from it's your straw man. It's not nothing to do with you. But you know who you are, and you understand the relationship you have with the straw man. Let's bring this back here. All right. So if this is you. This way, you know, we talk about security agreements and all that stuff. It's all it's basically expressing here. So if this is you and this is your straw man, if anyone's making a demand on your straw man, effectively they're coming after your personal goods, which you don't want to happen. So there's nothing wrong with making your straw man a beneficiary rather than always being a trustee by default. And this is what we now call um, expression, expressing the trust. Man, this is some good stuff here. I've, you know, I think people have paid a lot of money for what I'm teaching now. So, guarantee you, if you if you come on the course, you're going to learn so much more. But uh, at least it'll set you up for something much greater. So, here we are now. So you can express the trust. You're you're the settler. The settler is the real man. Only the real man can own anything, and only the real man can put something into trust because he has full rights, title, and interest to it. So. 
someone's making a demand against you just a, I don't know gas bill electric bill I don't know what it is parking ticket it doesn't matter the demand has been made against you or your straw man shall we say and by default they couldn't because you're the one who normally pays you are seen as a trustee does everyone understand that point now not I've not lost anyone the one who pays that's an administrative role and that's a trustee duty all right if you're driving the car that's fine but if you get the parking ticket don't worry about it it's, I don't that's not my job to worry about who pays that I just I, I just drive the car driving the car and and own the car are two different things that's why now if you express a trust on all the property in your home and a bailiff is trying to um, harass you saying well you're the legal owner so well no I'm not actually I'm not the legal owner here's a document that confirms that I'm just the beneficiary I just enjoy the use of it mate all right but if you want to know who owns it go and speak to that guy over there you run a mile Yeah, I remember a bailiff clamping my car. Yeah, this is the same the same harassment. I remember that, and I had to get the car um, chain the name changed on the V5 form, and then go out there at five in the morning because that's the time he came to clamp my car, thinking he got me. And I say, look, mate, I don't own it anymore. And he obviously did a check, and then two two minutes later, I remember I was on the phone to Kev about six in the morning, saying that this this guy is harassing me. He's clamped my car. Um, you know, come out, and he's gone, and the clamps disappeared. Because why? I'm no longer the legal owner. He can't harass me. He can't take the car. It's just as simple as that. Once you understand this relationship scenario of who you are and who else is trying to get in the picture that shouldn't be in the picture and where you want to be, that's it. You rule. I hope this is helping people. Yeah, I, hope, I hope it is helping people. So... That's why you don't want to always be a legal owner because it can be a very expensive, expensive life. You know, when you have a mortgage, you're deemed as a legal owner of the property. Even though you have possession of it, they see you as a legal owner and the mortgage company um, deem themselves as the beneficial owner. But that's not actually the case. That's not the truth. All right, so you, is these correcting these relationships. So does this mean that you don't pay any bills? Well, well this is not about me personally. But what I'm saying is I don't have to pay any bills, no. But I pick my fights because there's a lot, well, the amount of um, credit cards and loans and everything else I had and, and fighting, you'd be, I wouldn't get any work done if I had to express every single one. You'd be there till the cows come home. You know, so you got everything's all in, in, uh, in, in with common sense, shall we say. So the, the battles that I choose to enter into is the ones that I deal with. And the others, they can just get lost or disappear and, until I need to deal with them. That's just how I operate because I ain't got time to be fighting you know, 20, 30, 40 different people, um, I, I wouldn't know where I'm coming from. But you as a set law has to provide the funds for the trustee, absolutely, and we're going to talk about that in one second. All right, so it's a very good question that was raised. It says here, but can everyone hear me? Some of the people saying they can't hear. Um, I'm not writing at the moment, so, okay, good. So it says that, uh, so if you have a um, number of properties in, the, in my name, should I look to put the titles into trust? Uh... The first thing you would do, okay, what I'm going to do, hold that thought, um, Gary, cause, and then if I don't answer it, please remind me. I'm going to just finish off about the expression of the trust, then that I can answer your question a lot better, because I think people will have 101 questions once I finish this. Um, uh, right, so if I have a number of properties, yeah, so just hold that question, um, and another one was, but you have, but you as a set law has to provide the funds, just hold that thought, and please, um, if if I don't come back, just remind me. I will definitely answer it tonight. It's imperative I answer it tonight. So let me just finish this part off. So effectively, the set law is the real man. He owns all things. The trustee is the one who's deemed and made to pay. Uh, even when you go to court, you know, the defendant, if you are the defendant, you're the trustee because they, they say, well, why have you not paid or honored this contract? What they're saying is you're the trustee, you're the delinquent. I don't want to hear anything else except that you're going to pay. If, the, if you're not saying that you're going to pay, then that's it, you're, I'm making your life a misery. That's all, it's just trust. It's just trust. So when you express a trust and you speak in the language to the judge, or how I teach, pay it, but use the methods that you've got to your availability to pay, like A for V or promissory notes, until you understand trust, then you are not being a delinquent trustee anymore. You've fulfilled the obligation or the office of trustee, and then you can proceed. Now with trust, you don't even have to be a trustee anymore. All right? You don't have to be a trustee anymore. So, that's right. The last word I used was delinquent. 
so so when you express the trust you want to basically or get your straw man out of this relationship of trustee and into the relationship of beneficiary and also the one who thinks they're the beneficiary who should be the trustee obviously you've got to change that relationship and make them who they truly are all right so let me just redraw the diagram so everyone can understand what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to establish here so and I'm you have to bear with me because I'm going to be using different colors now to, to highlight and emphasize the point so right so you have a set law you the trustee now I'm gonna to to just use myself here all caps Richard okay that's who they're construing to be a trustee at the moment for this example and then you got let's say um, you know banks are us I won't use any real names on this recording so banks are us company who are construing themselves right they've constructed a relationship against you because you didn't define your role when you first opened the account they are construed to be the beneficiary so now you're saying you know what now I see what's going on I'm going to correct the records that's all you're saying now at the moment they've got your promissory note in there the assets all right but it's general when we talk about general relationships it's still debtor creditor even though it's it's wrapped in a trust relationship it's not a real trust because it's constructive now I can't labor on this too much there's something I teach more in the course but I'll just let you know that they've construed a relationship against you and you're now expressing it out of construct okay you've made an expression out of construct and into the private realm that's what you want to do all right so effectively what's happening now is you saying right well this general relationship if I'm gonna have a real trust I've got to get it out of general and make it a real trust and make and put a special deposit now if you look up the word special deposit in the banking dictionary it just means a trust deposit it means that it's no co-mingling so in other words you're not mixing anything together uh, you know, uh, 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 when I say cold mingle, you're not mixing general with special. It's just on its own for a particular special deliberate purpose, which is to pay the debts or or whatever the set law describes. But it's got to do that function and that function only. An example of it is this: if you've got a bank account, okay, and the bank account is a general account that pays all bills, it's a general account. If you open a separate bank account specifically to pay the mortgage and nothing else then any money that goes in there is mortgage money and if you can prove that over history that every time anything only transactions in that bank account has been mortgage direct debits then you can prove that that's a trust account to pay only one mortgage it's been one um, account number um, and there's only one asset in there to pay the mortgage bill so that's a trust account to pay the mortgage you understand my point it's specific for one purpose only you're not doing your shopping in, in as though or waitrose you're not going there to do your Starbucks with that same account and pay the mortgage at the same time it's not general it has to be specific okay so something has to take place now the settler as I told you he does what he wants he's the rule maker he's a lawmaker and he can do what he wants and he can he sets the he can create the trust and set the trust up and he can collapse the trust now since it's not in expression yet since it was construed he can revoke this trust he can actually go in there and, 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 and um, change it around and do what he wants to do without having anyone's permission to do so so he has the right to withdraw the assets out of this trust okay we'll do what we call the withdrawal rule I'm sorry the screen's getting a little bit messy I will go over it again let me find another color here um, hope there's no, hope there's no one color on the screen um, so he does a with drawer of the general title now okay so I'm just telling you the mechanics at the moment we'll, we'll teach you how that's done on the course but I'm just showing you the mechanics at the moment so he does a, a withdrawal of the asset and he's also going to basically uh, see if I can find maybe red might have to f suffice for now um, he's going to redeposit all right, I'll just stick that in here. He's going to redeposit a specific asset. Okay. All right, so I'll just repeat that. Set law. Okay. You got 
general assets in there. He says, I can't deal with general assets because that's what's causing me the problem. So I need to pay the debt off, but I'm not going to use this, this debt to creditor rubbish because obviously that's a co-mingle. So I'm, I'm going to do a withdrawal, get rid of that. So I'm going to withdraw those assets. All right, withdraw those general assets. And I'm going to do a redeposit with something specific. Okay, and then that specific asset is only going to be used for the payment of debts or whatever it is you say it's going to be. And this trust is something we use to pay the debts of this specific account. We have account number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So that's stage one. So stage one is of the expression that is. Well, it's not truly stage one, but just for tonight's call, it's stage one. You're going to do a withdrawal. And then you're going to do a redeposit with some assets. So what are the assets? Well, for the purposes of this call, we're going to call it a special deposit, and you're going to give instructions, so we call it an order, all right? And you have your restricted endorsement on there, which we also know it to be called... an equitable asset. Now let me get my Black's Law Dictionary. I'm going to read something out to you that might be, you might find surprising or interesting. Just give me a second. I'm trying to tell you, you got all this stuff, you go to court, or you just write it down in your letters or whatever, once you know what you're talking about. Uh, they won't be saying this is from the UK, um, USA. They won't be saying that this is something you got off the internet. This is hot stuff, and I, I encourage you. You know, since this is a private workshop, that this is not something you'll be passing on to your mates. This is for you, since you took the time out to sign up. Right. So, uh, equitable assets. Where are we? Equitable assets are all assets which are chargeable with the payment of debts or legacies in equity. I shall repeat. Equitable assets are all assets which are chargeable with the payment of debts or legacies in equity and which do not fall under the description of legal assets. Okay? That's by Joseph Story, who's a, 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 a serious proponent over 100 years ago. He's got some good stuff out on, on equity, which we'll talk about probably tomorrow or the day after. Um, I repeat it one more time. Equitable assets are all assets which are chargeable with the payment of debts. Chargeable with the payment of debts. Do I need to repeat it one more time or not? Yeah? It's in black and white. All right? Equitable assets are all assets which are chargeable with the payments of debts or legacies in equity. Trust, by the way, the law that governs trust is equity. So you are flipping the script completely on these guys. They won't even know where you're coming from. They're not even trained in equity. So you're coming at them with this stuff and they don't even know where you're coming from. And they, it confuses them. So you are operating at a higher level and a higher power and most cases will just disappear. Alright, most cases will just disappear. Now some of them may want to fight you a little bit, hence tomorrow we're going to talk about that the day after. But effectively now you understand you're going to put an equitable asset in as your res, as your property. In the trust, is everyone with me when I say that? Now, is it is that is that starting to open up any kind of confusion or? Okay, good. Everyone's with me still. So, all right. So you're gonna put your equitable asset in there because you've done a withdrawal of the general title and you've put a deposit of a special, unique title. You've created the trust as a set law. Now the next thing to do is to define who the trustees are and define who the bens are, the beneficiary. Now obviously, as we said before, let me just go back quickly. Alright, we said here that as banks are us, right? Who were construing themselves to be beneficiaries because you or your straw man was paying them. So they're benefiting it, they're having use of something, your promissory note and they're receiving money from you. 
So they were construing themselves to be the beneficiary, even though you are the set law, but they've, because of your performance over the past and your lack of information before today, you were the trustee, all right? So now you're going to have to flip the script on them, all right? Remember, though, that the beneficiary cannot be the trustee and the trustee cannot be the beneficiary at the same time, else the trust shall collapse. It will collapse, all right? So it says, how do you create the value of the equitable asset? Well, the equitable asset has no value. And I know that's a bit of a mind warp at the moment. The equitable asset in equity uh, is the value. It's you. All right? But remember, it's not for you to worry about. It's for the trustees to deal with. Your job is to enjoy it. You put the asset in there. They know how to monetize signatures. That's not your job. That's the trust. The trust pays the debt. The trustees that then deal with it. You put your instructions. They go and deal with it. They can get agents and everything else. They've been doing it for hundreds of years. It's not going to be no big deal for them to do it now. It's just as simple as that. You've just given them an asset on which they do. You do it all the time when you sign prescriptions and uh, bank loans and all this stuff. You do it all the time, but now you've just taken it out of a general context and you put it into a specific private one. It's just as simple as that. They still know what to do. And the beauty of it is it's in the private, so no one needs to know. There's no embarrassment, there's no vexation, it's just straightforward. All right, so where was I now? So effectively, the relationship needs to be defined. And you need to remember this one, if you don't remember anything else, one thing you've got to remember, that if once a beneficiary and trustees or legal and beneficial titles merge, there is no trust. And so the beauty of collapsing the trust when you express it, and this is hopefully I'm trying not to confuse you because this takes me about half a day to explain, but we're going to just have to go with it for now. Um, and if you come on the course, then, then uh, we can explain further. But uh, what's going to happen now is because you want to be the beneficiary and because you want them to be the trustees, is a, a bit of a flip-flop taking place here. All right. Now, even though what I'm saying here takes place in on, in theory immediately, it's not an immediate action. It just it does take a little while to take place. But it's just for you, just to serve as your ability to understand what I'm saying here. So what we're doing now um, is this: when you express the trust. You're saying, well, I'm taking it out of construct and I've, I'm expressing it now for what it is. And I'm saying now that the straw man, Richard, or whoever is the beneficiary, and the real man, sorry, and the, the, the bank are us, is a trustee. But remember, the parties are still the same, just the relationships have changed, all right? So you, you do have effects, well, I say two trusts, but you've, 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 you've collapsed the old trust by creating the new one because the parties have switched roles. So effectively, whoever had the legal title, now, so, whoever had the legal title now has the beneficial title, and whoever had the beneficial title now has a legal title. So the the trust in theory has completely collapsed which is what you want you've extinguished the debt uh, now this is I hope it hasn't confused you normally it confuses people because it's not the easy thing to grasp straight away but you, you effectively merged titles when you've done that process and when you've merged titles you're saying great I don't want this debt to exist ever again I don't want to see it it's pretty much similar to doing an acquisition in OID, if anyone done the OID process. It's gone, 